Welcome to our Python Utah North uh, presentations. We're going to start with our subtopic by Dr. Lue. Dr. Lue is a uh, um, adjunct professor at the University of Phoenix, and he works here at R. Donnelly. And he's very smart, and he's going to teach us about the CSV module, which is an included standard lib Python module. Um, take it away. Thank you all. <laughs> Okay, um, as Dave said, we're going to look at the uh, CSV module, which is an included module in the uh, Python release. I've been working with Python 3.5 for reference, not that there's much of a difference with this particular item. Uh, specifically, uh, CSV, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, what is CSV? Anybody? Right, or tab separated values. <laughs> so it's either, even though it's called CSV, it can be commas or tabs, uh, which means that you have, uh, in effect, a text file where the fields inside the text file are separated by commas or another delimiter. Okay. Okay. So Python. Like I said here, plain text file with delimiters and uh, record delimiters. In Windows, you have uh, RN, R, R, Control R, Control N, character turn line feed. In Unix, you have line feed. Line feed only. Okay. So you also have your text fields uh, that can be with or without quotes around the text field, and that can get you if you're not very careful with it. Generally, this is used with spreadsheets like Microsoft's Excel, and for those of you who uh, do uh, database, this is the first normal form, not third normal, so everything is duplicated ad infinitum if need be. So, okay, next. Okay, uh, Python CSV. Again, native support. You use import CSV to get it going. There, are the little commands list dialects will tell you what dialects are, are available to you in your uh, installation. And the dialects are normally Excel, Excel tab delimited, and Unix. You can look those up because it does make a difference of how, how you're treating your file. Now, this is one problem I found with this whole thing is that the reader right now in a Python CSV is hard-coded to recognize either character turn or character turn line feed or line feed. Any one of those means a new record. So what happens if you've got and I'll show you that situation in a moment. So, I've got some links down there. You can go back and look at them. Let's just get it. go ahead and do the demo. All right. Let's start with an Excel file. Right there. Here's my Excel file. As you can see, this is a fun little field. Somebody put a manual carriage return between each of those values. Now, when you have that file and you export, I'm not actually, I'm not going to do the save as, just in case they screw up. But let's take a look at them. This is what it looks like. So, what do we need to do to fix that? The first thing we need to do, and this is what I've done in my code sample, <coughs> is I've got load the client, which pre-processes and does a replace. So I've taken effectively everything that is a uh, line feed and just put a pipe in front of it, in place of it. 
then what I do is I substitute back and make sure what we end up with going in looks like this. So rather than having multiple lines that were going to be read as individual records, we did that. Now, let's go ahead and look at the actual Python code. So does Python's CSV parser not understand new lines embedded in the field? No. Oh, that stinks. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's the point. Yeah. Then why didn't it replace the one at the end of the line? Because I'm... I actually did the double replace. Oh. So what I did is I, I said, okay, take all of these, replace them with the pipe. But if you see pipe line feed or carriage turn line feed, okay. you know, keep those, put them back. Okay, I've written a really simple piece of uh, Python code. Notice we start with the import CSV. I also decided to be a little bit fancy here because I could, and I'm using temp file. I don't know how many of you are familiar with temp files. So it's a memory-based file. Unfortunately, guess what? Python CSV does not read temp files natively. It has to read them. It can't parse them. So it has to read them off of the disk for some reason. I couldn't get it to work. Mm -hmm. You're treating temp files like string and L. Could be. <coughs> Between the binary, the text, and so on, it was just too complex. I just put it back on file after I got the text file. Okay. And just for laughs, I decided the final output would be an Excel file. So I used OpenPy yeah, Excel to write back an Excel file at the end. What so, uh, data structure are you putting to go into a list? Um, we'll get there. Okay. All right. So the first process, remember we talked about replacing, and it was all accomplished with one line, essentially. And remember that uh, temp file? It's right there. And please don't laugh at my um, um, cases. I'm just used to writing th my fields in those... Uh, capitalizations and whatnot. I still have a little bit of COBOL left in me. Okay. So what we do right here is we'll open up this file, which is the CSV, read it, and do a full replace on it as a binary file in one chunk. We put the character term line feeds back and we got rid of the, this standalone line feed with that one command. And then we wrote it back to the temporary file. <coughs> the next routine, we're just writing it back to disk. That's all that does. Did everybody notice that uh, the GitHub link out on, sorry, out on the Etherpad? Right there. So all of this is out there for you. <clears throat> Next, we're going to input the CSV, and here's where the CSV elements come in. So we're going to open this as a CSV. I basically said new line equals nothing, because, as I said before, character turn line feeds are not going to do you any good, in this case, on the read. It recognizes them all by itself. Then I used something called Sniffer, and it just used, it's just used to identify the dialect. And that gives you uh, certain attributes, like what the terminators are, and so on, that can be used with the reader. Then what I did is I just put them into a dict, you were asking. <coughs> Each row is a list and it's inside the dict. And then when I, just to be, to have a little bit of fun at the end, I did the make sheet using the um, 
Pi XL. And the first thing I did is I said, okay, I'm going to use Pi XL in native form and just substitute fields into cells. This one here just switches to which workbook you're using and then makes this that workbook active. And then here's the title, new title of the sheet. And there you go. This is static information I'm loading. And this is a load from the CSV file that we read earlier. And we save the workbook and we're done. So when you execute this, okay, sorry, <coughs> wrong command. That's it, finished. That was it. The output that we just created, the final output is right there. Oh, sorry, that was the input. Where's my final output? Where are you? Oh yeah, test XLS. That's what I called it. And there we are. So you notice that these these fields, these first five fields, they were hard coded from that uh, output in the Python, and the rest was from the input file from the CSV. It was. Pretty simple, actually, all in all. And everything you need, including the transfer steps and the intermediate stuff, is right there. Um, questions? Probably, if you're going to a spreadsheet. Right, repeat question. Oh, sorry. You didn't. You're using um, the CSV module to try to write an additional column of data mm -hmm. from another output. Well, from somewhere else. Yeah. From, uh, from another program. Yeah. Okay. Now, <coughs> to me. I wouldn't even look at look at the CSV module to do that because all you're doing is appending onto the end of a list, in effect, in Python, and then you're going to write it out. So it's more like a print statement or a write statement. What I would do in your place is I'd look at why am I doing it and would it be, make more sense to put it straight out into the Excel. With that Excel module, you can tell it which cells are writing. Well, they're using CSV as okay. legacy because all their stuff is in CSV. Okay. And that's what their customers expect. Okay. Um, so naturally, I'm just going to the CSV module. Okay, okay, I gotcha. But if it's easier just to write a column, I mean, I initially had it set up to write in rows mm -hmm. because that's way easier. You just open the file, you mm -hmm. write a row at the end of it. It's always easier to write a row, right. but if you need to write a column, what, what you should probably, the way I'd look at it is I'd read the existing file in, mm -hmm. put in a dict of lists, and append onto each list, and then write it back. Or, if you know the values one by one, don't even treat it as a CSV. Treat it as a data processing uh, file, just a text file, and just append your value on the end. Okay. Um, say that file gets really, really large. Then I do it line by line. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Any other questions? questions? Very good. Thank you. Thank you.